Hi all and welcome to the very first MMO Monday from the Video Weekly. This is a weekly cast that's going to discuss the massively multiplayer online role-playing game genre and its successes and shortcomings. This week we're going to discuss MMORPGs and certain game mechanics and systems that adversely affect the communities that play the games. Essentially, you know, we have this past and this present form of MMORPG where in the past, when you go back into 1999 with games like EverQuest and Asheron's Call, there were these big open worlds, very similar to World of Warcraft, but the amount of people playing them was a fraction of the amount of people that play World of Warcraft. You had this really close, tight-knit community of people that really, really just wanted to play video games with other people. You know, this was before Xbox Live, before PlayStation Network, when, before the PS2 was even out, back in the Super Nintendo, PlayStation 1 type of day, where multiplayer meant sitting in front of your TV with a friend holding two controllers. This was kind of this revolutionary thing, and the people that played were very close-knit. I remember playing Dark Age of Camelot, starting in 2001, and, you know, you, you Everyone that played that game had this fierce sense of pride for the faction or realm that they played. When a raid was happening and you heard the alarm that your realm was being attacked, your raid would end. People would stop and they would go and attack because every person made a difference. And it was sort of this, this obligation that you felt to everyone else that played that, that you needed to be a part of it, that you needed to go and defend your realm. And you look at today's MMORPG where 90% of it is single player until you get to the end and then you group with a bunch of other people doing raids you know back back in that old style there were no quest markers I think what we're experiencing with this new style is a dramatic decrease in communication between other players it's a decrease in friendship it's a decrease in camaraderie it's a decrease in overall the massively multiplayer part of the genre you have these these quest markers and teleporters and instanced dungeons that totally cut you off from the rest of the world you know even world of warcraft which was championed and heralded for taking that older style of Dark Age of Camelot and Ashron's Call were all big open worlds just like World of Warcraft was. They just didn't really have the fame that Warcraft did. And Warcraft took that sort of system and they expanded on it and they made it their own and they did a great job. But today, you know, you have all these other games forgetting that World of Warcraft drew its inspiration from somewhere else. All these games have quest markers and teleporters and everything is sort of simplified and you're guided on this linear path to leveling where you're level 10. Okay, well you need to go and do these quests because there really isn't a more efficient way to level up. There really isn't anything else that's worth your time other than these quests. So you go and you do those quests and well honestly it's faster to do them by yourself because when you have to go and kill 30 boars and get 10 boar tusks and when they only drop off one out of every four boars, well doing it in a group is utterly pointless. It's just going to take you forever. So these games have kind of drifted from this let's get in a group and just go and kill shit to well, I guess, you know, I'll solo for a while, and, oh, well, I guess I'll solo for a longer while, because the level grind has gone from this group-centric style of play to this solo, let-me-do-these-quests-and-I-just-want-to-hit-the-max-level kind of play. These, these content designers put so much time and effort into creating this big world, and then it's like the, the content you're actually experiencing in those areas is just filler. It's like, I don't even read quest text anymore. What's the point? I mean, they're not interesting, and the ones that are interesting are still tedious when I have to go and do them. It's almost like you're playing a single-player online game than you are a massively multiplayer game like the games of old. You know, I, I like to describe the new Star Wars game as a great single-player game with a multiplayer function. Because it certainly isn't an, an MMO by my standards. It isn't massive. And it's hardly multiplayer when 90% of the quests are best done solo. Especially the dungeons. The dungeons, you go back to the old days of Asheron's Call, EverQuest, Dark Age of Camelot, even Anarchy Online. You could go in and a dungeon was however many people you could fit in there. In fact, most of Asheron's Call and Dark Age of Camelot's dungeons weren't instanced by today's standards. I mean, they may have been, you go through a portal or you enter the zone, but it was still kind of an open zone. It wasn't really its own instance. Everyone didn't get their own version of the dungeon. If you walked in there, if you walked into the Tomb of Mithra in Dark Age of Camelot, 
and you wanted to get to that one spot where all the mobs respawn really quick, well, there's a 9 out of 10 chance a group's already there. You can either join or you can wait until someone leaves. And it was that sense of you're playing to play with someone else. You're playing to play with a group of other people. It's not something that you generally encounter today. It used to be all these people with the common interest of wanting to play together in an online setting in a time where that really wasn't a common thing. Really, what type of person is the person that plays these games now? It almost seems like that initial type of demographic that really got the genre started isn't what's being catered to right now. And because the developers are going for this broad, sweeping audience, you can tell that the quality of the games and the innovation being created for these games is really suffering. There hasn't been a game in years that's had three factions like Dark Age of Camelot or just massive open world PvP type function like Ashron's Call and the closest thing that came close to that was Shadowbane which was however many years ago and after that was Age of Conan and, and those are games that really brought something unique to the table but were so flawed and buggy due to trying to appeal to all these different crowds and this big mainstream demographic that the games floundered when they came out because the majority of MMO players go in expecting to play World of Warcraft and what they get is something different and they're like, oh, well, this isn't World of Warcraft. And the sad thing is, is that games like Rift, which are really polished and really good in their own regard, suffer because they try too much to be like World of Warcraft. So when a person goes in and says, oh, this is World of Warcraft, that's great because you, you manage to create something that lives up to this, this monolithic creature on a pedestal that everyone wishes to, to reach up and try to take a part of. And it suffers because a month later people are like, oh man, well I guess if I want to play WoW, I'll just go and play World of Warcraft. I don't need to waste my time or effort with this. This isn't as good. And this re the, the result of this oversimplification of the genre is killing the community because you have this this level of exploration in, in the previous games, that you go out into the world. I remember Dark Age of Camelot didn't even have a map for the first four years or so. There was no in-game map. There was a coordinate system that you needed to learn how to use, and I myself never learned how to use that. I'm not a, I'm not a scientist. I could never figure that out. But I did memorize all the landscape. I could probably still find my way around all three realms of that game without using the map. I can tell you where everything is, and it's that kind of exploration that doesn't exist anymore, especially in games like Star Wars or, or Rift, where you have this linear leveling experience where the only point of the zones really is to provide you quests to do. There's none of that interesting stuff that used to be there. There's none of that just general experience that you can get from running around and exploring. The level of exploration doesn't even compare because most of the zones are only crafted to accommodate the quests that are in them. And it, it's like features like the random dungeon finder. When that was introduced, that just totally killed exploration because you have this type of person that really just wants instant gratification. And they really just want to go in and get their loot and get out. Today, you look at World of Warcraft, which seems to have set the standard because when I played Rift and Star Wars, both communities were screaming, oh, we want a random dungeon finder. We want to be able to not travel the world. We want to be able to just find random people and get straight into it because we don't really care about the experience as a whole. We care about the end result. We care about the loot. We want to be able to do this other content. This content here is irrelevant. They just want to jump right into it and it doesn't promote playing together realistically at all because when you go and you get four other random people from a different server that you'll never see again, what are you really doing other than just trying to grab loot? You go back to the Dark Age days or even the pre-Burning Crusade days of WoW or Final Fantasy XI where if you were a total piece of shit on your server, everyone was going to know you and you weren't going to get in a group because of the way you acted. There's nothing to stop people from being like that anymore. There's no sense of community or camaraderie camaraderie on these servers anymore in most MMOs like there used to be. And a lot of that, I think, is probably a function of guilds. Guilds used to be this big piece of the puzzle where if a bunch of people liked playing together, they would go out and they would form a guild, which is really just a player group, just like any other dungeon group that you run, only a little more permanent in its functions. If you go back to Ashron's Call, your guild or your allegiance was such an integral part of playing the game because you would literally swear fealty to someone and that person would be your patron. And it was kind of like a, like a father-son type relationship almost. Part of the function of the allegiance system was a patron can have 12 vassals and each one of those vassals generates additional experience for their patron based on the amount of experience they gain. So 
if I went out and got 100,000 XP, my patron would get 10,000 XP just for doing nothing. And patrons would always be the type of people that would give you their hand-me-downs when they were done using them, go out and find your items, help you with hard quests, and give you those buffs, and they would be literally that one guy that you can always count on. And that was one of the earliest guild systems that's been in an MMO, and, and they just don't make them like that anymore. People aren't that way anymore. A guild in Dark Age of Camelot was so integral because it was a group grind type of game. The quests were essentially meaningless from an experience standpoint. You grouped up and you got a great farm spot and you would hunker down and you would farm up and you would get your experience that way and link shells and Final Fantasy 11 were almost the exact same thing it, it was just a better way to to go through the content when you could do it with people you could call your friends generally just random strangers you meet on the internet that you just hang out with all the time and you t you look at today's guilds where it's really just a mad dash to the top Everyone wants to be in that number one guild. Everyone wants to be in that guild that's going to clear the raid content. And barely anyone really just want to be in a guild that's there for having fun. It's bred this new type of elitism into people where if you're not in a guild that's going to go and clear the content, you're going to go out and you're going to find one that will. And I think that's that's part of the focus that game designers need to look at is are they are they building their game around these raids like World of Warcraft did? Because there was a lot more to World of Warcraft than the raids, and there still is. But you look at these games that are coming out, like Rift, and you look at Star Wars, where what do they really have at the end other than the raids? Do they put so much time and effort into making one 20-man raid that by the time the game came out, everything else suffered because of it? What happens when people clear that content? The answer is that they grow bored. They leave their guilds. There's no real allegiance anymore. Now, there are, of course, guilds, such as the guild that I personally lead, where it's a group of friends that are going to travel from game to game, and, you know, they're going to be best bros for the rest of their lives. And there are, certainly are large gaming clans and guilds out there that really transcend that. But when you look at how long those have been around, they're from that previous era. They're from that previous generation where guilds actually meant something other than just a green chat in your chat window. I think game designers really need to look at, at the way that they're simplifying all these different systems and how it's affecting the quality of their communities. Because as it stands, the gaming community for MMORPGs has gone from this niche genre where everyone has this kind of common interest and everyone's really there to play with other people to an after-school special, an after-school thing that kids do. It's lost its focus and it's lost its heart. And I think that if people really re-examined what they're doing when they make these games or how they act when they're in these games, then I think the community can bounce back, but it's going to take time and it's going to take effort. And the real question is, is it something that's going to happen with today's MMOs? And I personally do think it's going to happen. When you look at the games coming out, like The Secret World and Guild Wars 2, I think that those games really bring something to the table that is going to make everything better. It's going to make the community better because the systems and mechanics in place focus in some way on bringing people together and forcing people to play with other people, which is really going back to the roots of MMORPGs, which I think will get the genre out of the rut that it's currently been in and continue to move it forward in a really positive way. Thanks everyone for listening in to the first MMO Monday podcast. We'll be back next week to discuss Guild Wars 2 and why PvP is so essential for an MMO's success. Please be sure to check our website, videoweekly.blogspot.com, for future updates in the wonderful world of video games. See everyone next week for next week's MMO Monday.